Commander. First of all, I want to congratulate you on such an important victory. The Empire of the Rising Sun has now joined the family of our glorious socialist republics. Though culturally they are a backward and superstitious people, technologically they are quite advanced. Dr. Zelensky has been delving into some of their secrets, and I'm sure he has some interesting insights. Dr. Zelensky? Dr. Zelensky? Now, where did he go? No matter, we have more work to do. It is time, my comrade, to deliver the final blow to the Allied cause. You are to meet the Supreme Allied Commander at Easter Island. Together, you will sign a treaty calling for an end to all armed conflict. I have convinced them that we as a nation are weary of war and that our people only want peace. We will sign this treaty. We will come together as brothers and then we will crush them. Yes, General. It is a trap, and you, my friend, are the bait. Welcome back, Commander. We have the Allies running scared, and now their general is willing to broker peace. They have shown weakness, and we must exploit it. Meet them at the uninhabited Easter Island and convince them that we are sincere. And when they have lowered their weapons and raised their glasses, it is then that we will strike. The Allies are en route from the Southeast, expecting to negotiate a treaty. However, your task is to destroy them. Therefore, you must draw first blood. Here is what you must do. Prepare an assault against the Allied forces coming to meet with the Premier. Do not strike until you have a signal. Stand by for further orders from the Premier. Good fortune to you in battle. New construction options. Con Welcome to Easter Island. The Allies approach, Commander. Lead them into the trap. New objective. Right away, we do not have a lot of funds to work with. And even though we have several gold deposits, none of those actually have anything built on them right away. Building. You're also going to want to make good use of at least the two oil derricks that are right north of our base. Just so you can get that added extra income. Building. Now, since we're on an island and the objectives are helpfully pointing us out that uh, we should build an ambush force, and our AI partner is going to do a lot of the whole navy building stuff, uh, it's probably best if you focus either on ground units or, better yet, air forces. There's... There's also a tough decision as to where you should probably build out towards, uh, but this won't become apparent until a little later in this mission. Be prepared to strike from the air or the waters. You need now, I make a small error here because you really don't need two super reactors, not at the start anyways. And again, we only have three minutes. So the money that I am spending on a super reactor could better be spent elsewhere. It's a little nerve wracking to see a large amount of forces that just come in and you can't do anything against them. You're under orders to essentially not kill anybody. However, um, killing people is kind of a specific thing, so let's see if I can potentially work my way around that. 
insufficient funds. After all, sometimes it's about how much you can bend the rules rather than break them. Select target. The objective is And yeah, you can't satellite them, even though it's not technically killing them. It's when you drop them from an orbital launch onto the planet that kills them. So after the timer runs out, an aircraft carrier shows up, comes over to your dreadnought, or to a neutral dreadnought, and stuff happens. Are you here to escort us to our meeting with the Premier? I'm afraid not, my friend. Comrades, attack now! What the? They double-crossed us! Open fire! Clear to engage. Attack the Allies now. Destroy the enemy. Now, thankfully, and for whatever reason, uh, the AI becomes really bad at avoiding the satellite, or the magnetic satellite. I don't know if it's because it's it needs to move its units together, or it's a Navy thing. Either way, um, at least our buddy has a good navy, and it makes taking out the initial forces rather easy. It helps when you have like 12 twin blades, but you know. It's probably important, uh, really important to point out that it makes a lot of sense to simply build some AA defenses and just hard lock that uh, aircraft carrier from doing anything. Because then you prevent the allies from being able to establish their base. You didn't think we'd fall for your little ploy, did you? We came to this summit with our weapons loaded and our safeties off. They have the island. And if they can't establish their base, then... Obviously, they, you know, you get to harvest as much gold as you want and take all the resources and not really have to worry about anything. Three missile turrets is also woefully uh, inadequate for the amount of twin blades that you should have if you go all out on them. And while it does suck that my base is now being shot at uh, by a bunch of uh, allied infantry, it's not really that bad. Granted, I don't want this to happen, uh, and if I had been planning around everything a little bit better, uh, I would have instead had a couple of sentry guns to deal with the infantry, and then any boats that do show up likely wouldn't be that much of an issue. Alternatively, you could probably have a couple bears lying around and just have the bears uh, deal with any uh, infantry that show up. It's hard to really recommend conscripts because it doesn't really feel like they are great against allied infantry. The shotgun guys, the riot troops and all that, they just deal a pretty big punch. Similarly to the first objective, uh, taking out the allied carrier kind of progresses the mission where you might not want it to. Thank you, Commander, for so thoroughly and brutally dispatching my enemies. But now I'm afraid you have outlived your usefulness. You know just enough to be a threat to me, and with that, the future of the Soviet Republic. I will not say das Vadanya, Commander, as I can assure you, we will never meet again. I do not understand. The Premier has gone mad. My loyalties lie with you, Commander. For the good of the Soviet people, you must defeat him. And so we are betrayed once more. Whatever happened to the good old days where you could just be enjoying a nice cup of tea and then be murdered? Twin 
you know, you'd think that you would want to take down your opponents at their weakest, not necessarily when they've just defeated an allied force and secured, you know, total victory or potentially global victory around the globe. All that being said, it is a little problematic. Uh, so I had to, again, restart because I lost when I, I did the whole shenanigans with the magnetic satellite. And there's quite a few units that now get sent your way that Twin Blades may be good against uh, individually. But as a whole, it can be a little taxing. The fact that the uh, that Tim Curry's units do include stuff like Kirovs, uh, and you're going to start seeing Migs used against you, does mean that you're going to either want to build Migs of your own, which I didn't do, um, mainly because of some cost. Uh, but also you'll want to build some form of anti-air defenses because the Kirov Kirovs, if uh, left untouched, uh, are really going to do a number on your base. I was actually pretty lucky in having an AI in this game that cares about stuff. So they will actually chase down um, Kirovs every once in a while and essentially uh, do their part in uh, defending the actual, you know, I guess rightful heir of the motherland. I also, for whatever reason, uh, absolutely did not rebuild one of my ore miners when I should have. So, it, for some reason, I was thinking it was going to do it automatically. Uh, definitely not the case. Uh, which, I guess, just speaks to the fact that I've never really lost any refineries or any, you know, ore capturing units. So, I was being a little coy <laughs> with that nuclear reactor because I didn't want it to, to blow up my own units. And as with uh, at least the next mission, uh, going after the resources can be a really good idea. You technically have to destroy the vacuum imploder before it ever fires. I believe that's how the objective works. Um, and, well, it's a pretty non-standard map. Uh, we've already seen the Moai heads uh, shoot units out of uh, out of them. So, uh, he, your opponent essentially gets free infantry, which isn't that bad, and does at least act as like a pretty flavorful and funny action to have occur. Uh, whereas other Moai heads uh, have like a giant laser in them that shoot at ground units only. So you're never really vulnerable, uh, or at risk I should say, when you're using air units. Again, MiGs are probably your like most dangerous opponent in this. Um, just because, at least with, uh, uh, oh my god, the frogs, you, the bullfrogs, you can at least shoot back at them, so it's never really that big a deal. It's about this time where you realize that even though you're near the end of the campaign, I think this is the this should be the before last mission. Uh, you don't have you never seem to get enough experience uh, in order to get all of the superpowers, which is kind of disappointing because it does also mean you'll never get to the bottom of the superpower like chain, uh, and you can't unlock some of the I guess more powerful uh, abilities that we haven't seen whatsoever. There is certainly a lot of potential for that to show up in some other modes, and multiplayer is obviously a different thing entirely. But I think the point stands that uh, it's a bit of a missed opportunity, because at least with CNC Generals as the main inspiration for those things, uh, you were guaranteed to get to the bottom of it. And as long as you can defend yourself early enough, especially against the Kirovs and anything uh, the allies might throw at you to eliminate you quickly, uh, you should be fine with 
rolling up on, on this uh, on this mission. Again, the Moai heads can cause a little bit of issue, um, although it's kind of, I feel like it's pretty rare. Uh, and the vacuum imploder at one point, uh, if you destroy the nuclear reactors, uh, shouldn't count down. At the very least, its defensive structures don't work, so enough twin blades will destroy it before any MiGs will take you out. And then you just have to worry about the main volcanic base. And honestly, you shouldn't have to be worried about the volcanic base. There's a bunch of oil derricks up there, and clearly they have some airfields. But outside of that, there's really nothing to uh, prevent you from just steamrolling the rest of this mission. In fact, the EAI could probably do it without any supervision whatsoever. I must have victory. I am the premier. This is my timeline. Cash bounty ready. Uh, yes. An ore mine is nearing the weapons. Even if, like technically, even if the AI didn't do anything, which it did here and, and completed the objective with V3s. I will be returning to Moscow now. But push on, comrade, and make your country proud. You could just drop a bunch of satellites on individual buildings and destroy them that way. It's also interesting to note that uh, in completing this one, in this mission, uh, you're not going to get Zana again. As she mentioned, she's going to stay, stay behind, uh, which implies that there's only one of two other commanders that we're going to play with uh, for the rest of this campaign.